My man is struggling to breathe. The air is so bad. Oh, what the? Who's doing? Them lead flies are coming for you. The last of your problems is going to be bad air if you don't run from cover. Bullet Witch is a game that punches above its weight. You won't believe how much this game punches above its weight. It's the most average game of all time. And I'm saying that is punching to get that rating. <laughs> you know how people have movies that are so bad it's good. That's what they say. The room is so bad it's good. This is the idea that a movie is so poorly made or so confusing in how it's constructed that it becomes an enjoyable experience to watch it. I fed up with this world. Bullet which basically exemplifies this same idea in game form. For everything it does wrong, it does something right. So it ends up balancing itself out at every single turn. What I mean is this, the initial part to the intro is unrivaled. Watch this sell itself like hotcakes. A raven flies off a tree, a bunch of ravens, bunch of zombies. A woman with a raven, she throws the raven out to the screen. She's a witch and she shoots bullets. Graceful and merciless. Look at that, that was actually very graceful. Bullet witch. Bunch of feathers come down, look how cinematic and dramatic this is. Countless demons walk the earth. I would say it's a more of a birdemic, but that's just me. But you can clearly see she's a witch and she likes to shoot bullets. We get the idea. You've shown us the title card bullet witch a few times. Is this where you've been hiding? Lament your resurrection within the flames of hell. That must have been magic. That must have been magic. <laughs> Burdened with undesired powers. A witch whose human soul is no more. They show the title card once again. They really wanted to drill in. This game is Bullet Witch. We are really loud and proud about that fact. Then you get it for a fourth time it's as it says press start. And as you may have noticed, the levels of corn <laughs> become quite apparent the more you pay attention. People, we've got a rat's nest. Destroy that rat's nest and stop the demons from entering our world. That's your mission today. This dude done lost his damn mind about rats, nests and demons. You are all fighting for the future of the demons. Hell no. The gameplay and graphic style don't really sell the game as good as that intro cutscene or the fact that it's a no nonsense female protagonist with the ability to summon birds and has a demonic gun. Imagine that your companion is a demon who guides you on your quest. That is incredible. Imagine if Bayonetta was the worst thing ever, but you have a sweet spot for it. That's what this game is for me. I've never played Bayonetta, so that's just a joke. <laughs> Don't sue me, Sega. And it's only fair that I gave the intro a moment to sell itself. I think I should give level one a moment to sell itself too. <sighs> just a raven too bad. There's something better than a raven. She's got nice skin. You want to say your prayers? Witches don't need prayers. see that that does the total opposite of what the intro done more or less just flops look how lousy this first level is i'm going to show you something much more interesting that they should have done for a first level this level where she's flying on a plane battling a sky monster this level was the reason i never forgot this game it never left my memory it's one of the greatest levels ever it reminds me of those old games on the 16-bit consoles gunstar heroes contra and run saber those games would usually have a level where you battle on top of a plane or you have some sort of crazy aerial combat. Gunstar Heroes is an outstanding run and gun shooter made by Treasure. And in the third level, it's called the Flying Battleship. You ascend as the level starts by jumping up. Use the homing shot if you want an advantage. But the part I want to specify is the boss fight. It's a two-parter. There's one part where you fight M. Bison, but just below you is a floor. After you beat M. Bison, the second part you fight Zangief. Now this time you're fully airborne. You can hang underneath the helicopter that you're standing on and Zangief will grab onto the propellers and fly around. You'll have to jump under the floor to get away from him. This is an extremely exciting fight, very unique in so many ways. Run Saber is a game made by Atlas. 
And this is more of a run and beat em up instead of a run and gun. You use sabers to combat enemies. There is so many moves in this. In Gunstar Heroes, you can dive at enemies, wall jump, do all kinds of stuff. Run Saber is basically Street Fighter. That's how many moves you've got in this. The very first level, you're on some sort of silo. An interesting thing in this game is you get a compass telling you which direction to go. You follow the arrows going through the base until eventually you get to a locked door and the locked door acts as a mini boss. After beating this mini boss, you'll end up outside. Then when you get outside, you'll have to board a fighter jet. This fighter jet will take flight while you're on top of it. You'll then have to fight this fighter jet, which is a boss. Mutated faces start emerging from the jet itself and you'll have to hang off this thing while it's flying upside down. It's so cool. This is one of the greatest things in the whole of the 16-bit era. And third on the list is Contra 3, funnily enough. This game needs no introduction. And in Contra 3, one of the final levels has you hanging off of a helicopter, which also has a long missile on it. You battle a boss while hanging off this missile. This boss looks like Bionic Commando or something, or Inspector Gadget. It's a brilliant aerial combat, but it doesn't end there. After you fight this boss, and you have to do snakes and ladders flying through the air on these missiles, but one of the best run and gun boss fights ever. I wouldn't be surprised if the people who made Bullet Witch looked at these games and said, yes, I want all of those. You can fall off this level too. It's not easy mode. It's not one of those levels where you're on top of a plane. It's old school. You can fall off this giant flying bird, Mario Sunshine style. You know where he's on top of the sand bird, that level, except this is much harder. This level really shows off the graphics to this game. It shows off how creative the game can be. And I know I'm just going straight to one of the later levels in the game, but I think this would have been a great place to start the game maybe you don't fight the boss it could have just let us look around on top of the plane then we see the thing in the sky then it cuts back to level one that would have made people way more engrossed in playing this game caught our attention in a much better way fly me to the moon let me play on xbox what the hell is yo this giant flying eyes and a mutant space shark the level one that they made us play is really bad. In every aspect of it, it's bad. Level one literally starts with an ambush and you're expected to know moves in the game that you haven't been taught yet. So the bullet part is obviously the gun. The which part is you have abilities and one of these abilities is called ancient wall. What you'll do is magic up a wall. It lets you block projectiles, all sorts of things and three guys are standing right in front of you. That's the only thing I can think of that that's the reason they done that is to make you use that ability, but it's ridiculous. I can't remember where I heard this. It might've been Shigeru Miyamoto or other Nintendo developers saying this. No, I think it was the Doom guys. <laughs> I think they said the first level to your game should be the last level you make. I imagine this pretty much means by the time you get to the end of your game development, you've mastered your game, you've perfectly crafted it and you understand every other level. So the first level should be a perfect tutorial. I imagine it's something to do with that sort of logic or that sort of train of thought. Maybe they thought, Oh, I know what we'll do. Close combat in this game is very difficult. The ancient wall is a move that we want people to use way more in this game than we do. We don't want them using the dodge. And I imagine the intro to this level put off a lot of players who played this game. I say it's an average game, but that intro is way below average. I only forgive things like this because the plane level is so good. Bullet Witch the name is so on the nose. It's like Toy Story. <laughs> yeah, this is basically Toy Story. This isn't scary. Whoa. I wouldn't say it's family friendly. Well, it is a game about family actually. So there is that. <laughs> it's got an amazing OST. It's high octane Dracula compositions like I Am Legend in an EDM concert. Imagine instead of dubstep, it was vamp step. That's what this is. A lot of these games that went under the radar usually have a very impressive OST. You end up being surprised how well made they are.
the cutscenes, like in the intro, can be quite cinematic and over the top. The ones where it's characters dialoguing with each other can be a bit silly. The voice actors, I'm not criticizing them, they've done a great job. But the characters go between having no emotion or are quite over the top. And when two characters like that are in the same scene, it looks a bit weird. It's not like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's more like a peanut butter and pea sandwich. <laughs> the voiceovers, it feels like they're trying to be schlocky, not taking it too serious and serious at the same time. It's like House of the Dead. <laughs> Civilians walk up to you in the street. They'll be like, I've lost everything to ghouls. Life is almost not good. Something like that. that vanish quickly without trace. The NPCs are gormless. <laughs> you just see them walking around going, huh, what's going on? Oh no, I can't believe this is happening. Just, that's what they're like. <laughs> they're ridiculous. This man has been looking for his keys for about seven hours. I don't know what's in the air or if it's in the water supply, but these people just got no clue. These people are husband and wife, believe it or not. And they act like they don't know each other. You know what surprised me? And I'm pretty sure the voice actor of the main guy in this game is Goku. It's funny to hear Goku be like, all the ghouls have taken over. We have to <laughs> kill the ghouls. <laughs> He's like, you're a witch, a bullet witch. Speaking of demons, Alicia, you look like a normal human being, but that power of yours isn't human. I don't know. It's more like... More like... A witch. And that giant gun is like your broom, huh? The game is so old school that it asks you when you first start it up, do you want to put the auto save feature on? It's like, um, of course I do. Do you know the price of electricity lately? I might have a blackout. Um, I definitely want the auto save feature. I do not want to have to do level one again. And because it's so old, I'm not surprised by the lack of auto aim and clunky movements. I ended up realizing for me to play this game comfortably, I had to turn the aim all the way to the bottom, have slow movements. It takes me like 20 seconds to turn around the whole way and that's not even a joke, but that's the only way I'm gonna get comfortable aim with this clunky movement and poor aim assistance. The crosshair on the machine gun is fairly generous. You don't have to get the shot perfectly dead center. You can be off to the side of the enemy and it still will hit them indirectly. A lock-on would have been so much better. It would have made this game at least one point more fun, but that is on a hundred point scale. <laughs> The movement being clunky is not the worst case scenario because there's not much platforming. You're typically only ever going from point A to B. You don't have to jump across gaps or anything like that. The most is you'll jump out of the way of something, but you don't really need to be perfect with it. It's not a platformer. Can you see that big jump? I'm expected to make that. I'm not evil Knievel. What do you think this is? They said you might need to do a bit of witchcraft, but Minecraft, I didn't sign up for that. The story to the game is this. 2007, there's an earthquake. 44k dead. 2008, a globe war, 600k dead. 2009, a zombie virus outbreak happens and 320 million people written off. 2010, aberrant climates, whatever that means. Not the word aberrant, the word climates. 800 million people formatted into extinction. So up to that point, it's basically real life. <laughs> 2011, legions of horror, worldwide massacres, uncountable numbers of civilian casualties. You're better off counting who's still alive. I'll give you a clue. She likes bullets and she might be a witch. 2012, all nations eradicated. 2013, humanity's dusk is on the cusp. And to think it all started with an earthquake. Usually everything bad starts with a rich billionaire. The Tesla bot will be real. As you may have noticed from some of this gameplay, if not all of this gameplay, the frame rate is basically 1919 movies. I can almost see the person standing up to switch to slides. It's worse than slow internet. You'd rather choke on some Marmite and every time you burp, you taste that nasty, disgusting thing in your throat every single time. And every time you breathe near someone, they're like, oh, did you just eat Marmite? You stink. Ugh. God, get away from me. Oh, jeez. That's what you'd rather experience. And that don't sound like a very good life. And I know a lot of people who like to eat Marmite for some reason. What is wrong with people? Marmite? Seriously? 
Oh, I'm joking. I don't mind poor frame rates. I actually hate Marmite more than bad frame rates. So the standard weapon you have is called the gun rod. This is the weapon that you use for shooting. And you can get four different types of weapons. The standard machine gun, a shotgun, a sniper, and a Gatling gun. The Gatling gun is so strong. But every time you use it, you got to walk really slowly. It makes sense. She's a bullet witch, not a tank girl. You get infinite ammo with these weapons, but every time you reload, it takes down some of your magic. Also, you have the magic ring, which has different abilities on it. There's six regular abilities and then three extra specials you get. The specials are given through different stages in the game. The first one is given on level one, then the other two at different points as you progress. The three specials are different elements. It's lightning, tornado, and meteor. Electricity, wind, and fire. There's also a dodge move, aka the jump, aka the indirect sprint button. The dodge is a move you'll be using a lot because it's about 25% faster than walking, I think. I don't know. I never done a proper test to really see it. I just sort of guess from what it looks like and feels like. I'm just surprised they don't have a sprint button. You literally have a button called not used. Wouldn't it be nice though if there was a spare button for sprint purposes? Even Super Mario got that right. There's a power-up system for all the abilities and weapons. You can upgrade both your health and magic meter, gun rod, and also your witchcraft abilities. So six of the nine abilities are optional. You have to purchase them with skill points, which you get when you finish the levels, depending on how you perform and which difficulty you got it on. All different things add up to how many points you get at the end. I do like that they made this one little small design choice in this game. Every time you start a level, it says in the bottom corner what the level is called. I don't know why, but it adds a little movie feel to it. Well, it's more B-movie, but <laughs> I'll take what I can get. It's starting to bother me so much now. She keeps trying to get my attention. Excuse me, lady. I don't know what you've heard, but I'm not interested. Go away. Level one has you in a town that looks like it survived nuclear warfare. Everything's all brown and dingy but it's complemented by the sun setting in the background. It's almost as if it's saying, we're done shining light here. This place is finished. There's nothing left to see here. The curtains are closing in on this place. Goodbye and good night. There's a few humans running for their lives. A few are disoriented, not knowing what to do. The main enemy in the game is geists. They've got soldiers hats and typically equipped with machine guns. They're just causing havoc all over the place, shooting the humans, doing what they want, roaming the streets, being a right menace. I would say menace to society, but there is no society here. Nothing left here other than radiation. The Geists look like if Terminator fell into lava then came out and had 50 botched surgeries, only to realize he looks more like Freddy Krueger's long lost brother. These guys look like fourth generation radiation victims. But hey, at least they know how to compliment a lady. She's got nice skin. I have criticized this level a lot, but this is a game that the more you revisit it, the more you learn to love it. And this first level, you will learn to love when you visit it more than one time. I love movies that are all about apocalypses. Any zombie movie where they're at a mall or something, or they go in the streets, or like The Last of Us, for example, where you're walking through the streets and it's all dead and it's desolate. There's nothing around, no human life for miles. There is human life all over the place here, but I would barely call these people lives. I would say these are more like low lives. <laughs> <laughs> but I do feel like my love for this game is based on a lot of nostalgia too. So when I'm halfway through this level and it starts looking good to me, I'm like, oh, actually, this place looks great. I know that's nostalgia talking to me. I know 
This level is not one you want to experience when you first play a game. This should be maybe a third level. Maybe it progressively gets worse to end up looking like how it looks there. Not that everything has to be Super Mario green grass and blue skies, but I also literally mean I feel like they used the worst assets they had on this first level. The set design and everything in general is the worst on the first level than it is in any other stage. The rest are actually pretty good. So level one is basically the tutorial level. One of the main things in this game you have to do is kill these big floating brains and open barriers. And this is another sound I'm nostalgic about. The sound that these big brains do is something that stuck with me for many, many years. I haven't forgot it. I make this sound sometimes while I'm at home, just chilling. I'll just make this sound randomly. I'm gonna show you this sound now and I hope you also do this sound too. Just randomly, just start doing it. It's a fun sound to make. Humongous brain in the sky, uh, sky brain, concord cranium, floating frontal lobe, high mind, hovering head. Oh my God, look at this thing. It looks disgusting, it's grotesque. But that noise it's making is enchanting. I just want to do it myself. At the end of the level, you learn the lightning ability. It's used to destroy a tank. The game says this is the strongest ability in the game and <laughs> just don't worry about anything else basically from that point. It gives you a false sense of power because it's got a specific use only. You can't just use it whenever you want. Well, you can, but you can't. The second level, you go into the city and you'll notice right away, this looks so much better than the first level. Graphically, it just looks so much better. I don't know why, but it does. You also meet at the start of the level, a guy called Maxwell Cougar. You get this idea that he's gonna be so obnoxious and annoying, but he's a pretty likable character, probably because he sounds just like Goku. I thought that witches were friends with demons. So then why are you fighting against them anyway? All the skills and strategies you learned from the first level you should be using here. There's so many open spaces. They want you to get used to that ancient wall, but I'll be honest, it's not a great ability. The game thinks way more of it than it actually is. It's not a good ability at all. I don't know what they were thinking. It does block bullets and projectiles, but it also stops you from shooting too. You poke your head out, you get shot. It's not uncharted. You can't blind fire. You can't wall cover. This is a very linear game, but this level somehow felt like a maze. This is where they start to introduce how multiple brains can be used for multiple barriers at the same time. Instead of being get from point A to B, you have to go search around for the keys basically, like a doom level. The thing I liked about the second level was the fact that you could see the moon. It looks so big, like it's gonna crash to earth like Majora's mask moon. The first level did have the sun, but the second level being such a beautiful moonlit night, the juxtaposition between the first level being like a small quaint town and the second level being a city that still remained to keep beautiful. There's tiled floors all over the place. There's brickwork and stuff that remained untouched. But the main town where regular people were living got destroyed to oblivion. Why is that? The first level introduced the brains. The second level introduces these giant Krang looking marshmallow men. It's like someone took the Michelin man and said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm making a s'more out of that. Or it's because this guy's been taking so many steroids, his heart pokes out of his chest. At the end of this level, you meet this devil guy. It's basically an intimidation technique a lot of games use to show you, oh, you're not powerful enough just yet. Guess what? You basically remain the same power at the beginning of the game than you do at the end. So why show us that boss right now? Doesn't matter. They do it. They don't care what we think. You then go underground through the train systems and the sewage systems and all that, and you end up at an airport. The airplane level always stuck with me, but this was the second place that did. Yeah, it's weird that these were the main two things that stuck out with me. I think because the airport level is right next to my favorite level. So maybe that's why it's just like, it gets residual nostalgia. It's like this game's version of a backup dancer. The airplane level is Beyonce and the station level is <laughs> Kelly Rowland. <laughs> then of course the airplane level. I mean, come on, look at this masterpiece. This level is so good. It's the reason why this game has stayed in my memory for so many years. It's a challenge. It's a seriously hard challenge, especially if you've not used your skill points right. I wish I used more of my magic recharging meter than I did. To beat this level, you have to use the lightning ability three times on this flying skinless shark thing with eyes all over its belly, looking like one of those kids toys where you push the things in and they pop. So as you're flying on top of the plane, the eyes will fly off its body and go into the plane. 
the more eyes on it the more the plane tilts and you start rotating off the side also the plane will go on fire this is a time sensitive mission because not only do you have them a nose no eye diving into the plane pupil first burrowing in through the panels you have this flying chewed up bubblegum looking thing fixing to eat this plane no he honestly it eats the plane this is such a challenging mission but honestly i wouldn't have it any other way if this was too easy it would be boring the fact that this is a challenge makes this fun because you have to overcome it the plane don't play around if your controller's broken like mine and it slowly walks by itself like mine you might end up falling off the plane many times like i did so you have to watch your feet while you're looking at the moon you know that saying shoot for the stars you might land on your feet on the moon i think that's the saying something like that after you beat this boss the plane crashes and you have to go through a construction yard or something and you make your way to some sort of depot or is it plane hangars i'm not fully sure what it is a bunch of helicopters come landing in so maybe it's a helicopter landing place and even though you had such a great time on the plane previously she decides to get on a helicopter with these geezers and believe it or not this helicopter crashes too then you end up in another place where you have to go wandering for ages but they take the cake on this one this one is a trek and after the desert you end up in the lost woods what is this zelda ocarina of time just really confusing on where to go and you're never gonna guess who's in the woods leon kennedy from resident evil 4 this game is a resident evil 4 spin-off then the final level is back in the second level city but instead of going the way you came in you go the way you came out uh -huh, the game's being creative with its level design now you're powerful enough to fight the guy with the snake arms that you didn't fight previously you've basically got the same abilities the same power the same character everything's the same apart from this time you've got a few human people to help you the game can be pretty difficult at times i chose normal because it said if you're a fan of action games choose this and i am a fan of action games so i chose this i was thinking to go to easy to just breeze through it but it's one of those games that requires strategy to play it from different levels ultimately you can just hold the dodge button and just go through the levels without stopping maybe 50 percent of the game can be played that way because you do have to open barriers other times you might have to kill all the enemies in a certain area to progress but for the most part you can just skip through most enemies have poor aim or they can't hit you while you're dodging there's a lot of environmental damage you can do which is something i didn't expect it looks like you would just be able to do a basic amount of damage because you can shoot things like windows off the cars if you shoot cars long enough they'll blow up some of the tankers you can blow up too other times you can shoot things like signposts off walls but one of the abilities you get is called meteor and it will rain down meteors from the sky a lot of these will hit buildings and the building will collapse parts of buildings will come down collapsing above your head i know it's not all sorts of particle physics and these sort of things you would see in half-life or something or battlefield bad company i don't know which shooters have particles breaking off and have buildings collapsing i don't know which ones i think dying light done it but it's nice and that's just what i mean about this game it tries it might not have done a great job but it tried and that's why i think bullet witch is the best worst game of all time it's like surviving a plane crash. It's the worst thing to happen to you, but best for me because I'm the sole survivor.